When you when you started out in um, gospel, now you were working with a group called the Royal Tones. Uh, let let me give you some uh, as they say backstory okay. Okay. <laughs> on um, uh, on on how I got started in singing gospel and how the Royal Tones became the Royal Tones. Mm -hmm. It was my sister who's a good singer. Okay. She could do she could do the tenor part, the higher part. Right. And uh, myself and my n upstairs neighbor, so we all liked to sing, and so we would. And it would be those long days of summer, right. dogs' day of summer, right, right, right. long days. And then it'd be so hot at night, we'd all <laughs> sit outside, and we would sing, just just sing. And um, w um, one of the things we found out we could harmonize was it. Um, Gonna take the sentimental journey, sentimental journey on. And then my sister would chime in and my upstairs neighbor would chime We had three-part harmony. We were great. Wow. Now, there's one problem. We were doing all right. My sister is the lazy kind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, today she's happy she'll sing with you, but tomorrow right. don't bother her. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. so the and next thing you know, uh, so we got tired of her actions. So we mm -hmm. went and got our neighbor down the street, oh, okay. and she joined us. So now it's still three of us, and we needed one more. So we got another person, and we we put this together, and we didn't sound badly at all. So mm -hmm. we called ourselves the the uh, not the royal so no no the angel ears oh okay this was the angel ears because that was before that before the royal tones okay okay and that that was where gospel started mm -hmm. started uh, on a professional level that was the beginning of that okay and then um, uh, so we started going around to different churches and everything and uh, pretty soon now my mother joined the holiness church. Mm -hmm. And I was going over to a Catholic church because I loved the programs that they had over there for, for, for kids, you know, right. okay. uh, sports, music, and all of that. And so so my mother, she forbid me to go back there, so I had to go to her church. Mm -hmm. And we were, from that point on, we were raised in the Holiness Church. Okay. And, okay, she made me stop with the Royal Tones because they belonged to... Now, we were outnumbered. They belonged to another church. Okay. And so I stopped with them, and then pretty soon, um, uh, later on, after my mother passed, mm -hmm. uh, and I was still a young girl. I was about 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the Royal Tones needed another girl, and so one of the girls came by and got me. And that's how I started singing with them. And that was the beginning of the Royal Tones. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And it would, while you were with them, is that where the request came for you to write a song? Because I know you were asked at some no, point. No, not there. No. Okay. Was it Manhattan's? Uh, that, that Which was, is not the same Manhattan's. Th that's when I crossed over. <laughs> okay. Okay. So how long were you doing the gospel? Uh, I did the gospel in 17, 18, 19. Uh, I did the gospel for a while, and we... we um, Traveled around and let me see, must have been a couple of years. And that's was that up here or it's down? No, no, that was in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. okay. Basically, we worked out of Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and then we just kind of stopped. But we also met Professor Charles Taylor. Right. At that point, while we were the Royal Tones. Okay. So I, I figure you were going to ask me about the yeah. Professor Charles Taylor. Right, right. <laughs> and, and he was a young minister gospel singer okay and he needed a group to go into the apollo theater to back him mm -hmm. and he took uh, the girls with them the royal tones with him mm -hmm. and we were at and that was the first time i went to the apollo theater they had on stage and they had it like uh, the stage setting was like bleachers mm -hmm. 
And so they had like uh, on one row they would have the caravans, the next row they would have the soul stirs, the next row they would have Professor Charles Taylor and the Royal Tones combined, mm -hmm. and so forth and whom, whom else they uh, had on the program. And so um, that was the first time that I had a chance to meet all these famous people, wow. the, the ward singers. The, 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 right. And uh, you know who was with them, with the soul stirs at the mm -hmm. time? Um, Lou Rawls. Okay. <laughs> wow. That's how far back it goes because right. Lou Rawls came from gospel. Right. Sam Cooke was sure, gospel. Sure, it's with the soul search. Yeah. So, so that that's wow. quite a history back yeah. then. And Professor Charles Taylor, he was a great singer, pianist, and uh, and a minister. Mm -hmm. And later on, as life would have it, and when I switched music, my first musician was his brother and I didn't know <laughs> I didn't know that he had a brother. And That's so Sam funny Taylor. how you said that was Sam Taylor. Right. So and I and guess where I made my debut with him? Back at the Apollo Theater. Oh. When I switched to secular music. So who was it? Because I know the, the story behind your first big hit was uh, All in My Mind. Now. Okay. And how did that come about? Let me back up a little bit here now. All of a sudden the Royal Tones uh, are no more. And then I'm working in Manhattan, and I came out of the building, and I ran into this old friend who used to sing quartets and go along to different programs that we would be on. And uh, he said, hey, I'm so glad I ran into you. We're looking for a, a, another voice, but we would like a girl this time, and we'll teach her the baritone up high. You know, uh -huh. he was, uh, his name was Fred Johnson, and, um, and he, he said, uh, I said, but I, I won't uh, be able to sing, what do, what do you call it, rock and roll? And uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I can't sing that blues, the devil's music, because <laughs> those people will kill me in the church. And he said, do you want to make some money? I said, yeah, yeah. because I'm, I was between jobs and, you know, just uh, the jobs are scarce at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I said, yeah. So he said, well, I said, but I don't know anything about rock and roll. Right. He said, I'll teach you. He did. So I got with them. I was the only girl and we called ourselves the Manhattans. Not the ones that you know today. Right. But that was our name back then. Okay. And pretty soon most of, so by all of them being guys, a lot of them got drafted into the service. That only left three of us. Right. So we named ourselves the Trays. T-R-E-Y-S. Okay. And that's as three. And so I was the one who's like the secretary. I was the one who helped negotiate it and get, trying to get us in one contract into another. Right. And, uh, and while we were together, the leader says to me, here, I did this title. You never contribute to the group. You or Gilbert never <laughs> contribute. Right. So here, take this and have this at the next rehearsal. And that was an order. And the man, I'm <laughs> rolling my eyes. You know, how dare you? And so, anyhow, I went home and I got to thinking about him and his orders he just gave me. And I, I started thinking about the boyfriends I used to have and this, mm -hmm, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. and, and I looked at the title that he gave. He had written down, Maybe It's All In My Mind. Okay. And I got to thinking about it and thinking about it. And all of a sudden, this this whole inspirational thing came over me, mm -hmm. and I wrote it in 15 minutes. Wow! And I took it back the next rehearsal. Right. And we were rehearsing and everything, so we ran out of time. And he said, "Oh yeah, by the way, did you finish that thing I told you to finish?" Mm -hmm. And I looked at him again, <laughs> and and he said, um, "I said, yeah, I I did the old thing. Yeah, let me hear it." So I sang it. And all he was pleased with, I did as I was told. Mm -hmm. And he didn't wasn't interested in the song? Eh, well, it was okay. I did as I was told. Right, right. The song lay dormant for two years. Wow. Until later on, this friend of mine heard, uh, asked me to come hear him sing in Queens. And I did. He called me up to sing. The guy who came over, who booked the program, who booked the, the club there. Right asked me what I like to work there. Now he, in the meantime, had owned another act, and their name was Ines and Charlie Fox. Sure, okay, Mockingbird. Mockingbird. She had just gotten that Mockingbird hit, just released, 
and he ran into trouble with the mob. Okay. <laughs> the mob <laughs> took her away from him. Okay. And put her in the Apollo Theater for her debut. Okay. And uh, and and from then on, she never looked back at that one. And in the meantime, now he's he's got a recording session that he had booked with her, and he stuck with this recording session. He says, "Okay, you're next." And so that's the way people they seem to do me. Hey, you're next. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so I went to. I went to uh, the studio. They shared. They what they call it was a split session, mm -hmm. and we went to a Delphi studio down in the in the basement of 1650 Broadway. Mm -hmm. That's where Scepter Records and all of right. those different companies right. are. And so we went in the basement. We uh, it just so happened to have been uh, uh, Jimmy Spruill, mm -hmm. a guitar player, and he had a long chord because he was the kind of act that could do a lot of tricks, play the guitar behind his head, okay. with his teeth, mm -hmm. um, uh, things like that. It, and so he had that long chord with him. So he, so I had to go over to the piano and play the song, but I can't play and sing. Okay. So, But he called out everything I was doing to the band, which also just happened to have had a trombone player there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. None of this was pre-planned. Right. And so when I told them to do bom, 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 and hitting the trombone playing, bom, 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 he's blowing that. And, and I told them just what to do on it. So now I have to get up from the piano and right. go over and, um, and sing on the microphone. Because now, they with the split date, the bass player was recording the guitar player. Okay. And he took up all of the recording time mm -hmm. and they only left a half hour so i'm saying what are we going to do with this half hour so they said well do what you can so i got up there and we did it in two takes so that's what that we really hit it in the first take but we did it in two takes as a safety okay. and that was all the time we and had and that was one that was released and that demo to this day is that one million dollars wow song. Now, one of the things on this album, which is a fantastic album, by the way, but um, you said was not true, is that it says in the liner notes that hers was quite the uh, hers was quite the usual growing up, except that when she was still in high school, her parents died. Yeah, and and, and that was just not true. Yeah, that was so misquoted. Yeah. Okay, I have a book that will be out because right, uh, I'm working on it I heard now. About, right. And part of my story of how I arrived in New York, because I was born in King Street, South Carolina. Okay. But how I arrived in New York is the story. Mm -hmm. Because my mother had to come and kidnap us, but I didn't know it was my mother at the time of the kidnapping. Okay. It's quite a story. Yeah. So yeah. You didn't know your mother then? Or? Well, my mother and my father had separated, and it was a, a quite a turbulent marriage. Okay. And... I'm kind of deaf on one side because my father tried to kill my mother in the house, would shoot at her with a gun. Wow. And, and she, he shot between us, and that's why I'm kind of <sighs> deaf on one side. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I'll stop there as far as <laughs> I see him. Okay. But I, I hope my story yeah, is no, that, that good that's, because. <laughs> that's amazing. So, but how, when you came up here to New York, you, know, you were a child, basically, right? I was nine years old. Now, who did you come up with? My mother kidnapped us. 
my sister and I. Okay. But we left my brother because of me, because I, they asked, where's your brother? I said, he's over there in the nursery, that way. Okay. But I was getting ready to take off that way, and that's when they grabbed us and threw us in a cab. They gagged us, and they sat on us, and a lot of stuff. And oh my God. so that's part of the drama. Now, did you see your father again after that? Or was that well, he had a posse out looking for us. Oh. <laughs> I mean, this was really... This sounds... This was really, um, like... Like you, like, it sounds like some good old Texas western. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. Here come the posse. Yeah, and he the, came up here in New York. And the dog, and the dogs, and the whole thing in the woods. Yeah, Jesus all the, yeah, they, yeah, <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah, they were looking wow. for us. And so, but and I can't go into some of the okay. pertinent thing. But my father swore to me the night before when I told him that I think my mother is just the lady who says she's my mother. Right. And uh, and he and he looked. He was shaving in the mirror. And when I said my mother, he said, "If your mother came back in, she's trying to pull something. I will find." And he threw the razor on my neck and that blade on my neck. Oh my and he says, "I'll find you all and kill you." And so, I lived with that fear up until seven, age seventeen. And uh, so when we got to New York, we found out that this lady was much nicer, mm -hmm. and we calmed down, and we we took on a new life. And I've been in New York ever since. I'm a, I'm a transplanted New. I'm a yeah. New Yorker. Yeah, that's, that's but you've been here most of your. Oh, I've been here way most of your life. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. So. But you had nothing to do with, like, when they would say things like this, um, as sort of your biography. Mm -hmm. Now, it, does somebody, somebody sitting in an office somewhere just came up with this stuff? Or, like, because you obviously didn't say it, so who came up with this? What, with the idea what, of me doing this? Well, the idea of you, uh, your parents dying when you were... Oh! I mean, I, I, oh, like, back to the record company and people getting it straight, yeah. yeah. They said your parents. Now, I didn't have but one parent come to, to take us away right. from the other parent. Right. Okay. All right, so my mother was the only one who passed away uh, when I was just getting ready to come out of high school. Okay. Okay, she was the only one. So my parents didn't die. My mother died. Okay. My father, the old coot, lived to be 82 years oh, old. Oh. No, I'm sorry, 92. No, he didn't. 92 years Which old. Which was when? Like, but my mother died at age 34. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she died pretty young, so... So who were you staying with when you came up? I mean, after she passed away, were you just kind well, of on your own? Well, there was a dear little young friend. She says, you're not staying in this house any longer by yourself. Because mm -hmm. uh, my sister had married and moved away, and uh, and there I was by myself. So my friend of mine just grabbed me, took charge, packed my bag, and I was off. And then, That's a trip. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and he found me a nice, safe place to stay. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. And then I worked and graduated, put my, took myself out of school, and, mm -hmm. and I, was, I went to, at that time, Central Needle Trades, which was connected to FIT. Okay. The two schools were together, and I learned a lot about the fashion industry and, 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 and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. And then the two schools separated, and FIT is now on 7th Avenue, and, um, okay. and uh, I think... Uh, Central Needle Trade is probably still there, still happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just raised myself. I, so now I'm really learning life, the streets, the everything, right. you know, right, right from that point on. Were you, what, were you in Brooklyn at this time? No, I'm sorry. I was uh, living in Queens okay. at the time. Uh, let me see, when I, when I was, then when I moved to, with the Royal Tones, I went to Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Then when I got with the Manhattans, I was in Manhattan. Okay, makes sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, now, when All In My Mind came out, how long was it before it became, like, a uh, hit? Because it went to number two. Let's say this way. The record was put out, and that same month it started, started right hitting shows. everywhere. Now, was there any DJ that was responsible oh, for it? Or like, how did that get? I, oh, it, it started in Chicago. Okay. This DJ kept, because the record was out, but Bobby Marchand, Linda Hopkins, and one other person, oh, and a young white girl from Chicago, 
all jumped on the same... At the same time. At the same time, jumped on my record. And so in Chicago, I'm sure you've had the... the it's either the luck of the Irish or the draw of the cards <laughs> or whatever you want to say. Um, the, the DJ kept getting all in my mind by this person, all in my mind by that person, all mm -hmm. in my... And so he just happened to ask the program director, wait a minute, who's the original? Somebody said, the brown girl. Well, who wrote the song? They said, the brown girl. He <laughs> said, well, and the garbage thief go, this is the brown girl. So yeah. that's the, that oh, okay. the way they, so they just st stopped all the other stuff. Right. Yeah. Okay, now on um, the recording for All In My Mind, it uh -huh. gives credit for three different people. Uh -huh. Johnson, Kirkland, Brown. Mm -hmm. So. Who were Johnson and Kirkland as far as, how did, what did they have to do with the song? Okay, if you remember uh, my backstory when I said that Freddie gave me this title. Right. So if he gave me the title, and if you have no money, you come up poor. So there's only one way to treat it. I started learning a little bit about writer's rights and stuff. You learn yeah. because of Leroy Kirkland, he was our mentor. Mm -hmm. So we were being taught quite a few things. And so I knew that now you don't have 100% mm -hmm. anymore. I decided that it would be nice to give Freddie Johnson the credit. Okay. Because he gave me the title. Right. He didn't write the song. I did. Right. But he gave me the title. And then I cut it down and say, all in my mind. Even though the lyrics say, maybe it's all right. in my mind. And um, uh, now, I felt that. Leroy Kirkland was our mentor and he was very good to us and he saw that we got little work under the table at night and uh, doing studio work. Mm -hmm. uh, I just thought it would be a nice thing, a gesture for him. Right. So I put his name on the uh, on part of the writer. So now we each have 33 and a third. Okay. So, and I don't regret it to this day, even though my cut is cut down, but yeah. I don't regret it because so, but you, it was the right thing to yeah, do. Yeah, that's incredible. That's very generous of you. It was the right thing to do. But, and, and so, with so many artists that got kind of taken to the cleaners, have you been... Oh, I've been cleaned and washed Okay. And cleaned. Because <laughs> <laughs> right. that seems like to be the, the, the standard story. Yeah, is. it is for all of us. All we knew back then was... We wanted to sing, and that's all we wanted to do right. was make the music. Right. But too bad we didn't stop to learn the business. There's two words, show business, yeah. and believe yeah. me, they are separate. That's right. You do your show, and then, then somebody else handles yeah. the business. Yeah. And the person who handles the business, and this happens to mostly groups than more than anybody else. you right. got four or five guys to deal right. with. And they all went in it with their heart, and they're singing under the street lights and... Right. Um, and and and, uh, and they write these songs together, and they don't get the credit right. that's due them, and um, and everybody gets beat out of it, and yeah. then somebody else's name appear on on your song. Right, right. And it was very unusual for you to be the writer because most of the artists back then, like the Shirelles, and uh -huh. you know, they, uh, Sam Cooke wrote, uh, Curtis Mayfield. There were there were exceptions, but most of the artists were just singers. That's you know, right. Like, you know, Little Willie John or Clement And I wasn't, I wasn't really a writer, mm -hmm. but I, I guess I'm more of an inspirational writer because mm -hmm. it, like, like the way it happened with me, it just, it just happened. It just, yeah. it just fell right there. It just right. fell right out of right. there. Mm-hmm.